Kia ora and welcome. Kia ora whanau, ko Ian toko inoa. Um, I'm here joined by Marku Multiardu. Thank you very much, Marku, for joining us. We've got some exciting ice hockey action coming your way. And thank you for tuning in to one of the best sports on this evening. Some people say it's the That's best. That's right. Uh, there's something else going on tonight. We can probably talk more about that. But yeah. before we get into the ice hockey action, we've got some recap footage for all of you and your viewing pleasure mm. from last week's matchup on Sunday between the Mako and the Swarm. Enjoy. As we're back to full strength, as Hyde will come with it. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Diggs Mawson goes back and forehand. Score! Oh. No, he doesn't. Oh, he had an open goal there on the forehand and could not put it in. Returning to New Zealand now, though, as Nash Haywood jones rips one on net and rebound scores. Marco take an early 1-0 lead here in the opening frame. Way, but only as far as Mawson. As Kozak will break the attacking zone. Tula with it. Try to find Jonsson. He shoots and scores! Oh. Kyle Jonsson sitting in the slot area with a Marco player unable to clear it. And he bangs that in and that's as easy as it'll come for him. As Polozov will have it for the Swarm. Gives it up to the point and Sando, he'll rip one on and scores! Remy Sandoy with a blast from the point goes through everyone in front and the Swarm will take a 2-1 lead. Off, heading off to the dressing room. Let's hope it's, not, it's nothing too serious. Oh, what an amazing save. Kozak's pressure there by Regan, but the Swarm still able to keep it in the attacking zone. Good move there by Jonsson. Hopkinson, he shoots, he scores! A lovely move from Kyle Jonsson to set up Richie Hopkinson. And he puts that on the high glove side past Moore. He gets a shot on. As Hyde comes the other way with it, he's got a 1-0 on -no opportunity here. Fakes a slap shot and scores! Try to go backhand or maybe just intentionally try to put it between the legs of Harrison. And the Marco cut the lead to just one. Going to work there. Winning the face off cleanly against Atwell. Beats one, beats two. Centering feed and oh it's my. score! Just like that, the Marco are back in this one. Within a couple, only a couple of seconds, the Marco have managed to tie it up. Cleans up. Makes a little center ice move. Puts one on net, but that's wide of the pad. Jonsson with a follow-up shot, but missed that entirely. Taller with it. Try to find Jonsson, and he scores. From an impossible angle, he elevates the puck above to his sh power shoulder. To shoot it. As Lewis dispossessed there at center ice. Wardenov finds Jonsson. He's got a... Breakaway opportunity, and he scores! Goes in for the hat-trick! Kyle Jonsson gets a hat-trick here tonight. Find Tula behind the swarm net. Tula dancing around, fires an up-highs up pass to Hopkinson. He's here on a breakaway, back and forehand, and a huge save there by Power. Edward Jones trying to bang it in deep. Here's Regan. He's got a man at the back post. They score! Alex Regan with a nice play. Setting up Serikov. And they close the gap to one goal with 19 seconds to go Do the Auckland Marco. It's 19 seconds. It's not a lot. And How well pressured as Tula... Puts it on the empty net and scores! Straight in the middle.
Um, Botany Swarm out east at the Hive in Botany. So this team has really raised their game level, come from years past. They are demonstrating. They are ready to take the ice against quality opposition, and it's here on display tonight for your viewing pleasure. So the teams have just taken the ice, and we've had um, a couple of warm-up laps. Now the, um, the Zebras are the referees, linesmen as we like to call them, that have the black and white stripes are just readjusting the netting, making sure that it is all good to go here, making sure there's no extra holes or big enough holes that the puck's going to actually go all the way through. We would not want that at all. As we get set to drop the puck here between the West Auckland Admirals and the Auckland Mako, the under-23 development team for ice hockey action tonight. Mark, Mark what, um, who's starting in the lineup for the Admirals tonight? Well, for Admirals, we have uh, centering Jordan Chalice uh, with Henderson and uh, Ellis on the wing. And for the defense, we have Flynn Hayward Jones and Justin Daigle, the captain. And the net, Jabba Kecho Magos in 34. Fantastic. And starting in goal for the uh, Auckland Mako team, Healing for Canterbury, we've got uh, Timothy Carey. Up front, we have Ivan Dalmatow, number 57. Leon Forgs, 19. Alongside them is Alex Soncody dropping the puck. We are into it. And CJ Kemp and Alex Regan rounding out the Mako defense. And they strike quickly as the Admirals try to get a shot on it, but it goes wide. Fraser Ellis receiving a pass from Henderson, but he misses his net. Oh, and we have a quick early penalty as well as we've got an interference call as Fraser Ellis took down his man, um, Forgs. So that was questionable in the referee's eyes. And not even, what, 18 seconds into this match, we have got our first penalty. We have got our first shot on net and first penalty within just 18 seconds. That just shows you, folks, how quickly and how quick this game is. Ice hockey is the fastest game in the world. How, how quick was Mako last weekend when they scored within six seconds to tie it up from 3-1 to 3-3? And they can be that just quick on attack, like those sharks that they have on like their jersey. Like those sharks. You're, one minute you're sitting on your surfboard, and next minute that Mako has jumped off your legs. <laughs> Let's see how they do in this power play as the Admirals send it back down into the Mako territory. And the Auckland team, the Mako, are looking to regroup here in the neutral ice. And that's 55. Luca Aranjus, one of the um, youngest members of this Mako team. H how old is this young man, Marku? Who is that? That's Luca, number 55. Luca Aranjus, uh, only 16 years old. That's great to see uh, such a young talent playing for the uh, men's league he's the youngest in the squad youngest as out on we the have ice a at the moment. chance on net so it looks like the third line out here at the moment for the Marco we've got um, Axel Rusky Jones centering a line between Ben Taylor and hey Tyler Challoner Axel Rusky Jones playing there with those um, reddish uh, tinted pants and a helmet. Just finished playing in Ontario Hockey Academy in Canada. So he's going to put that uh, overseas experience on display here for the Auckland faithful that have come out to watch. You can definitely see his distinctive maroon colored helmet and goldy locks flowing from the back of the helmet or under the helmet and his uh, different colored attire. Maroon colored. All right. I'm, I'm learning every day. And he plays regularly for the Sky City Stampede in Queenstown. And they do have a lot of talent down there and um, great coaching, good development program in that South Island jewel of a town where hockey is one of the main focuses. Hmm. Andrew Hay from Botany Swarm, one of the mentor players, they're putting on a lot of pressure on the Admirals. As Marco is trying to clear the zone make something happen on their power play. Yes, they definitely want to have control of that puck, which Andy Hay does now, and he has it settled down, sends it over across to Kang. That's Tehu and Kang, number nine. Gets stopped um, right at the center ice line by Justin Daigle. Daigle gives it up to Flynn Hayward-Jones, or is that Nash? Double check his number. That is number nine, and that would be Flynn Hayward-Jones taking a shot and aptly saved there 
by the starting goaltender for the Mako. Yeah, can't blame you for uh, uh, checking those names. We have so many brothers playing in the Emeralds. We have Flynn and Nash Hayward Jones. We have Tyler and Mason Kennedy, as well as um, Caleb and Sebastian Chamberlain. That is true. And the penalty has expired for the Admirals as Ellis skates directly to the bench. And we have five on five players playing at even strength. We have a two on two shaping up. That's Hayden Boole. Has it swapped away from his grasp. And stay tuned at intermission. We will be speaking to Hayden, one of the under 23 Cantabrians that are playing in this Mako squad. See what he has to say in the interm intermission break. And that's Regan with his distinctive uh, kind of, what would we call that, fishbowl visor. So kind of a yeah. clear visor. You can see the ice quite uh, well and don't really have the wires restricting your vision. Yeah, until it fogs up. I use one myself. It's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. You get the visibility, but sometimes you it can fog up a little bit more. Hopefully they got some towels or something on the bench so they can keep that clean and tidy so that he can see. As both teams kind of giving the puck away here, and that's a bit of an errant pass by the Mako, and it sends it down the ice for another icing charge. As we return all the way back down to the Mako end, and Admiral's looking to get the face off here and possibly put some more shots on goal and test the young Timothy Carey in net. Timothy Carey was the uh, starting goalie for Auckland Mako in their first ever franchise win over Sky City Stampede last year. And that was quite a feat to do. Not many, Oh, as we have a goal, a shot from the point. That is Chamberlain. See, Sebastian Chamberlain. Sebastian with a shot from the point. It might have taken a ricochet or a bounce, but it does find its way into the net. And we have a 1-0 hockey game. Sometimes a muffin is the most dangerous shot. <laughs> Absolutely. And what Mark is referring to there is a bit of a limp wrist, wrister shot. The puck fluttered a little bit before it got to the net. It wasn't clean and hard and straight. It was all over the place, and it did manage to kind of handcuff a little bit the goaltender, who was down, waiting for a hard shot, but then it didn't come. Well, it came eventually, and it just fluttered into the goal. Hmm. So it wasn't one of the young guys from Mako scoring first, but it was a young guy from the Admirals who has played for the Mako several times. Good on Sebastian. Admirals, Andy Hart has the puck and it's chipped up over the bench of the Auckland Mako. So we'll have another stoppage here as just demonstrating again how quickly this game can change and how fast the pace moves from one end of the ice rink to the other. And that's awesome when you have um, such talent on display and demonstrating how quick they can move. Mako win a faceoff, send it up the boards. Just get it outside their blue line. And we have Luke Tyon with it. Gets it to Andre Serikov, number 10 for the Admirals. And that puck makes its way back to Justin Daigle and he skates backwards very smoothly. Drops a pass down low behind his net to Flynn Hayward Jones. Back over to Daigle on the right hand side. Daigle backhand pass in front. Oh, just doesn't make it. As uh, Tyon was looking to cash in in front of the net and send it into the goal. Shot down. It was kind of a dump in shot onto Chaba, which he steers away. And Justin Daigle has it now and brings it up the middle. Sends a pass just out of the reach of Serikov. No icing. Kung sends it to his D partner who puts it up the wall. And Ben Taylor moves down with it, has it taken away, and that is going to be an icing as the Admiral sent it a little bit too far down the ice past the end red line, resulting in an icing. So some early action here very quickly in the first five minutes. We've got a goal, we've got a penalty. Total of four shots on net. What else do we think we're going to see here tonight there, Marco? Hmm. Well, we can really see what um, K 
can expect to see much anything. I don't expect us to, to see a fight, though. Uh, I think these uh, these games are a bit friendlier when uh, we've got these local teams. The guys know each other. Um, I'd be surprised if we saw something like that. But I would love to see one. It is, <laughs> I, I think, well, it's, as far as I know, it's still very much a part of the game. So anything could happen. So stay tuned. We do not know. So Andy, hey, you're down and on the rush. He has been skating very well this season. That uh, longer layoff certainly has helped his game well. He's looking very fit as the Mako take a shot on goal. It was stopped. The referee's blown the whistle. And we have some indication of for the stoppage. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but he's going directly to the bench of the Admirals to tell them why he blew the whistle, I believe. Looks like the faceoff staying inside the Admiral zone. Small amount of confusion as the referee says, let's play on, folks. So nothing doing on that one. Admirals. Chalice wins the faceoff back to Taylor Kennedy. Taylor Kennedy gives it back to Jordan Chalice. Jordan Chalice with it now, being harassed a little bit by Luke Snowd. And they, Milako take it away. Gain entry to the line. That's Hayden Bull. Sends it towards the net. Stopped by Mason Kennedy. Over to Ellis. Ellis. Puts a snap pass around behind the goal. Gets outside of the blue line. Over to Regan, who sends it to Kemp. Kemp up the wall. And that goes to Bra Bradley Apps, another um, one of the veteran guys who's helping mentor the younger players on the Mako. Good to see him back out on the ice. Mm. As Henderson gets it now, he could have a breakaway here. He's by himself on that wing. Wrist shot just misses the net and goes all the way over the glass as that's deflected out of play. Yeah. The other veteran uh, player for the Mako, Bradley Epps, uh, usually plays for the Canterbury Red Devils. And it's joined uh, it's today with Andrew Hay mentoring the young Makos. Yeah, I can remember when Bradley first came into this league playing against him. He's a, he's a great competitor, um, kind of a student of the game. He's learned an awful lot over the years playing. And it's great to see him in a mentor role this evening. It's the Mako breaking out of their zone as Son Cody plays give and go with Dal Mattel. But Dale Harrop, the veteran man that he is, aptly passes it back to Gareth McLeish. Has a little bit difficulty holding on to it, but the Admirals do clear the zone. Rooney sends it up to Harrop. Harrop skating well. One on three here, takes a wrist shot. Goalie stops it with a glove, but mishandled it a little bit but did compose himself enough to hold on. That bouncy buck just dropped from the glove. Sometimes he was able to uh, control it. Now, it may sound like a strange thing, but a lot of stuff we say might be strange to, to the listeners out there. If the puck is not put on ice before a game, it's rubber. It can bounce. It bounces an awful lot more. But when it's colder, nice and smooth. Anyway, we had a shot on goal yeah. there, and um, Timothy Carey. I get up for the task. Yeah, that's Stop right. Again. I just uh, learned how uh, the, the game pucks are usually kept frozen before they're used. So a lot of the pro leagues, they they get a new puck every uh, every couple of minutes, take it out from the fridge or the ice box. As we have a shot directly from that slot area, Sam Moses is looking up skyward as he didn't get all of it on his shot. It kind of that muffin term you say. His one was a bit of a muffin. Didn't quite get where he wanted it. Easy save for the goalie. Yeah. It's easy to say when he shoots straight at the logo. So the Admirals win a face off. The defenders pass it back and forth to each other. And uh, Vinny Sestroni sends it. It was kind of a high chip pass towards the middle of the ice. That got intercepted and then cleared out of that zone. But the Admirals now have control. Andy Hart has to go off his skate. Was quickly collected, then taken away. As Flynn Hayward-Jones in the middle pass. Oh, and Sestroni doesn't connect on that one. He had a bit of a one-time shot. Just, just missed the manages puck. manages to dust off the puck. And Daigle has a quick shot. It's in someone's equipment. It's there and on the doorstep. And we have another goal. That is, looks like Sestroni. Looks like Sestroni heard what I said and decided to prove me wrong and scores. 
putting in go. the rebound. Absolutely. As both him and his linemate were screening the goalie, so the goalie didn't see that shot clearly. It deflected, looked like off someone's body, didn't make it to the net, and Johnny on the spot, or Vinny on the spot, as some people might say, and he just forehands that puck into an empty open goal. That's right. When you're wearing all that goalie gear, it's quite bulky, and uh, you got the helmet on. It's, it's quite difficult to see under your feet what's right in front of you, and uh, Vinny's is thrown there, taking, taking advantage of it, and bounce, banging that puck in. So we have a 2-0 hockey game. The Admirals on an early lead here on their seven shots, two goals scored. The Mako have only three shots on net, looking to decrease or at least cut that lead into a half margin, 2-1, to one, but it's 2-0 at the moment. As we see Luke Tappen showing some good backward skating skill, setting that puck up the ice as he goes for a change. Mako in the zone of the Admirals. The pool digging hard for it, looking for the puck as two Admirals collide. Luke Simon with it now. Side steps. No, he does not. He gets introduced to the ice by Mason Kennedy with a solid body check. Got to keep your head up in this game, don't you, Marku? It's a learning experience. I love how you say that. Then you learn pretty quickly when you get knocked down on your backside. Yeah, it's the best way to learn through pain. And some people say pain's weakness leaving the body. Well, that, that might leave its mark. As Chalice regroups for the Admirals. Gets it back after a small deflection. Very good stick handler, Jordan Chalice, as he makes that display. But it's deftly taken away by Delmatau. And he takes a couple of whacks. As Damako are looking to put some pressure on here, as they do. And Kang has it at the point. Flicks it in off the glass. San Cody battling. And the puck is flicked down into the Mako zone. No icing, doesn't go past that red line. So Andy Hay smoothly brings it up the ice. Deflected over towards Jack Flight. Brings it to the goal. Shot. Oh, just missed the goal. Unless Chaba got a piece of that one. Henderson on the backhand up against the board. Sends it around the net to awaiting Moses. Sorry, Ellis. And Ellis puts it clear and relieves that pressure. Regan with it behind the net. Waiting for his players to cross and move. Still looking at his options. Gets some pressure, moves the other way. Sends it up the left side. Flynn Hayward-Jones over to Daigle. Daigle. Puts it off the glass. Harrop chases. Regan gives it his D partner. That's Luca Aaron just helping out down low. Shot on net, save. Rebound in front, puck squirts loose, and the players battle for it, and Timothy Carey covers it up as a bit of a skirmish ensues, but players skate away to go to their respective benches. Oh, and nice little show of sportsmanship as the, the stick of Kemp get, got somehow dislodged from his hands, then was given back to him nicely by the Admiral player. So Axel Risky Jones just misses on that face off, but Bradley Epps deflects that puck out of the zone and the Admirals have it as Flynn Hayward Jones gives it to Daigle. Daigle backhand pass to the middle to Moses. Moses chips it into the zone as Tappen. That's Luke, sends it across to Luke Simon. Luke Simon backhands it up the wall and Risky Jones has it. Dumps it down low behind the Admirals net. Risky play as it comes out in front but the Admirals regroup with it. Oh, and a turnover here. We have a bit of a break, but well defended by Flynn Hayward-Jones as using his long reach, managed to get that puck and send it out of harm's way. Bradley Epps, nice saucer pass, but too much sauce for Ben Taylor to handle as he goes off for a change. Get some new fresh legs out on the ice. Daigle, skating well here, goes around two players. Hard shot, blockered away by the Tendi. As App sends it behind the goal. And Sestroni putting some pressure on Luke Simon. Ruski Jones trying to get the puck as well. Moses comes out with it, sends it in front. Hit away by the Mako. Puck not out of the zone. Taylor Kennedy, shot from the point. Saved by, the, by Tim Carey. Apps with it now. Facing a one-on-two. Curl and drag, but misses the net. 
Poole absorbs contact. Doesn't get the puck, but does get it back here on the back end. Gives it away to the Admirals. Admirals, Luke Tyons getting away with it. Takes a nice kind of hip check from Andy Hay. You don't see that as often as we have in the past. If done well, can be a very effective play, separating someone from the puck. Sarikov, nice low hard wrist shot. Aptly saved by Timothy Carey. Mako finding some success, uh, doing, uh, causing those turnovers in the neutral zone. Like a call out is even Dalmatau getting that uh, uh, turnover from Chalice and just turning the play in their end and having a bit of a cycle going on there yeah, afterwards. Well, potential scoring chance for Avi Mako. And just the same as McLeish sends a shot, but it's deflected away. And Leon Forgs dumps the puck in right on goal as Dalmatau charges, but Chaba decides I'm going to hold on to that, get a face off, and we'll reset here as we've hit the seven minute mark of this first period. And the score line is two for the Admirals and none for the Auckland Mako. Mako finding it difficult to get into the game uh, once again last game against the Swarm. They did bounce back uh, in the second period, but they've been struggling in the first. I, I'm sure there's logical explanations for this, as it's uh, Marco is like a collection of players from several teams, so it Yeah, and several different sense. parts of the country, so they're not used to playing with each other, which is fairly obvious in the early stages of these games, but hopefully the more that they get familiar with one another when they're playing, they can definitely start to click and, and gel and hopefully show that team camaraderie that's needed for when you're playing a team game such as this. That's Kemp passing it over to Regan. Regan, nice delay on his pass up to Dalmatau. Dalmatau has a three on two here. It's stopped by Jones. And that's Nash Hayward Jones. Up to Regan at the point. He takes a shot. That's blockered away by Chaba. Probably one of the first harder tests that Chaba's faced at the moment out of his four shots. That was um, one of the more difficult ones. As Jack Flight sends it down low. McLeese, hard clearance from that his zone as Luke Tappan has it. Sends it over to Flight. Flight tips it up towards the wall as Fontaine chases. But that's turned over back to Luke Tappan. Luke Tappan stops up, sends it up the boards to Jack Flight. Flight into the middle to Fontaine. Fontaine skating well here, 49. With a shot from the point by Flight. Rebound was there. Daigle collects it. As the puck seemed to be kept in at the blue line. As we have a quick change of pace. This line definitely showing a lot more speed. As the game is opening up a little bit here. Daigle working on his edges. Sends it over to Hayward Jones. That pass a little bit hot for Caleb Chamberlain to handle. As he bodies his man in the corner. Back in in front. And that's taken away by Luke Simon. Luke Simon clears the puck away from danger. Did quite well under that pressure. The captain of the Auckland Admirals, Justin Daigle, one of the head coaches here in Auckland. A multi-talented individual. Sends it up to Caleb Chamberlain. Dumps it in. A little bit out of the reach of Andy Hart, and Timothy Carey decides to hold on for another faceage and a stoppage of play. We have five minutes to go in the first period. That's a face-off win by the Admirals. Shot from the point, and the rebound was there out of the reach of Moses. As Taylor Kennedy sent a nice wrist shot on net and saved. Now, Challenger ooh, avoids a hit from Mason Kennedy. Taylor comes across, puts a uh, sound hit on him. Moses puts the puck back behind his own goal as the Mako are forechecking here. Shot to the middle. Rusky Jones with a shot. Saved by Chaba. And a rebound. Oh, it hits the side of the net. Mako pressing. And Admirals looking to clear, but it's not out of the zone yet. Kang keeps it in. Sent behind the net. Ben Taylor sends it up to the point man. That's Apps with a nice little toe drag move on the wall. Back to Ben Taylor behind the net. Sends it in front. Taken away by Moses. Moses up the wall. Still not out of the zone, so they are not clear of any danger yet. Apps has the shot blocked off the skate. Gets it back. Puts it down low. Risky Jones. 
gets bodied out of the way, but doesn't give up on the play. Up to Sistroni, sends it clear, cross ice pass, missing hard with his pass, and Andy Hayes sends a pass all the way down into Admiral Zone, no icing. So in the last four minutes, we kind of haven't had many stoppages as this play has been continuous. That's Kemp to Regan. Regan moves way nicely from the forecheck of Quigley. Up to Apps. Apps over to Regan on the far side. He skates well down the left side of the ice. Is blocked by McLeish. As, as uh, Sebastian Chamberlain has it in the skates. Gives it up the wall. Unable to keep it in at the point is Regan. Regan backstepping now. Oh, has it taken away, and is in on goal and shoots. Oh, and a great save as Quigley was in by himself behind the defenders. Backhand, forehand move, and what a save by Carey. His best of the evening by far. Was that a turnover by Quigley? Looked like it, yeah. Yep. Sound forecheck as he um, put the pressure on the, the, the backward skating of Regan and managed to come up with that puck and had a great chance in front of the net. And Regan has a shot. It's blocked by Henderson. Apps has it. Spinning away from a check. McLeish, he battles for it. Gets it taken away. Puck doesn't quite get centered in front. And that's Bull, left-handed player. Sends it to Regan. Regan down low. And Regan takes a shot. Oh, and it goes just over the net above Chaba. Not sure if he saw it. Dangerous deflection there. Mako doing well, uh, generating a lot more offense in the latter half of this period. And hope we can see more of that coming in that second period. We got two minutes and 10 seconds in this first period. Henderson, great stick handler himself. Sends it to the Mako zone. The Mako have it. Luke Simon with it. Up to the boards, off the skates. Uh, Leon Forks, and we have a whistle. Looks like that puck has gone out of play. So the stripes of the linesman, lines person, will um, collect a new vulcanized rubber puck, getting ready to drop it. Hi to everyone watching us on YouTube Live, wherever you are in the world. Good evening, good day, uh, good afternoon, wherever you might be. Send us uh, some comments live. We're happy to uh, respond to any questions you might have or even uh, ask them of your, the players that are being interviewed in the intermission. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to ask us any questions as well. If there's something that we've said that, we, that you're not quite understanding or unsure of, more than happy to converse and call it all. As the Mako looking to get on the board here as it's 2-0 for the uh, West Auckland Admirals. We are playing, and wa you're watching some live ice hockey at Paradise Avondale in West Auckland, New Zealand. Henderson skates around the defender, has the puck in his skate, centers the pass, but no one on his team is there as the Mako clear. Dago with it. Skating backwards, sends it up to Flynn Hayward-Jones. Flynn with it, goes cross ice, but Henderson decides he's going to be going off for a change. Pass to Son Cody in the middle. Drop pass to his, his wing. That's Luca Aranjus. Jackson Flight tries it. Has it, oh, Daigle with a quick shot. Ooh, barely misses the net there. As Carey had to be sharp. Steering that one aside. Oh, and we have a hard hit as it pops the door open. There's an awkward check there. It sends Aranjus down to the floor. To the ice, I should say. And the linesman, Eagle Eyes McGee, oh, sorry, that's probably not his actual name, stops play with an offside. Often need Eagle Eyes to be able to see who's over that line. All right, we're being asked who's, who, who the player's being interviewed. So we have Hayden Bowl from Auckland Mako in the first period. And in the second intermission, we have Justin Daigle from the West Auckland Admirals, the captain. Yeah, fantastic. Keep those questions coming. And uh, kia ora from... Mihail, uh, Mihai in Bulgaria. Oh, sorry, Romania. Uh, yes, the players in New Zealand are amateur. This is a non-paid league. 
as the clock ticks down. We got an icing call the last 16.6 seconds. I like to say semi-pro. It would be semi-pro, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, we've had players that have played overseas and have played pro professional hockey. Um, but thank you very much for your question. I must say, though, out of all the teams and countries that I've played against representing New Zealand, Romania was one of my most fond memories at a world championship. Even though we lost, it was they. we didn't quit, and they, they recognized that and um, rewarded our efforts and, and acknowledged our efforts, I should say, because they are a fantastic, fantastic hockey-playing nation and moved up two full levels in the IIHF World Rankings since that tournament. That's and a great story. Thanks, Ian. And that brings us to a close of the first period as the horn goes. Auckland Admirals are ahead by two. And the Mako looking to get on the board with none. So stay tuned, folks. We will be bringing you a live intermission interview with under-23 player Hayden Bull, hailing from Canterbury from the Auckland Mako. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. Pomarie, Fano, Kyoto, and welcome back to the first period intermission break. Uh, I'm Ian Wanamaker. I'm joined alongside uh, one of the Auckland Mako players, 
Hayden Bull. Hey, Hayden, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm excellent. It's uh, great to see you, and um, I'm really curious to know a little bit more about this Mako side, because you've been in this team now for how many years? Uh, two. Two years. Awesome. And you've also represented New Zealand on a couple of occasions. Is yeah. that true? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So where did you travel to with that New Zealand team? Uh, I went to Taipei once when you were the coach. Uh, had uh, two trips to Taipei, uh, two trips to Bulgaria, and one to Iceland. Fantastic. So there yeah. you go, people. I mean, if you play this game, which is a fantastic game, you get a chance to travel the world, see some amazing places you may not have seen before. Hayden is testament to that. And it's a fantastic story, like being his coach. Now seeing you in the Auckland Mako, that is fantastic. All right. So um, I'm, I'm going to ask you about some people that you might be familiar with, the Scobies down in the South Island. Um, family do they do that, does those names mean anything to adrian and dave oh yeah they do i mean growing up as a kid they're always like babysitting like staying at the house all the time when the parents were away been some of my biggest fans since i was young it's great fantastic they, they moved up to the north island now i believe but yeah they haven't been caught up, up with them for a while but yeah. i should get back on that yeah no they they were living up here and then they probably realized ah you know what yeah. we love the mainland so much yeah. they would move back down to so if you're watching adrian and dave like shout out to you yeah. um it's great to always have your support, and that's my Kiwi mum and dad. They yep. looked after me too, so I, it's familiar. New Zealand ice hockey is a pretty small community, yep. uh, you might agree. Um, cool. So last question for you, Hayden, is what is it like to have the likes of Andrew Hay and Bradley Apps in the lineup with you in the mentoring role? What does that mean to you? I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I grew up as a kid, like probably from when I was about eight or nine, like watching these guys play. Like even just back home with the Devils, like... Like almost most of the lineup I grew up as a kid, like watching back when we had that that three peat, like being a fan in the stands, like cheering on every goal, and then now to get the opportunity to come and do it here is amazing. Absolutely. And congratulations not only on that and your success, but you're you're full grown young man. You're in the game, you're doing it, you're demonstrating to anybody who's watching, it's possible. Stick with it, you can have a lot of fun yeah. and enjoy the game. Thanks very much for doing this. Thank you very much. Good luck for the rest of the way. You too.
Paul Marie and welcome back Fanao Ko Ian Tokuinoa. Uh, we're alongside Marku and we are delivering you some ice hockey action NZIHL live from Paradise Avenue out west here in Auckland. Here in the great country of New Zealand. And it's so great to be here in this country in Aotearoa. It's a beautiful place to live wherever you are in the world. And thank you very much for anyone who's commenting or watching the games anywhere where you are. And someone from Tassie, I believe Tasmania over in Australia, was asking us a little bit on to explain the icing. So but I don't think there's an equivalent to icing. So what icing is that it keeps players from cherry picking and just waiting at the opposite end with the goalie. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if, if you're, say let's the Mako team, and they're on their side of center ice, the bread line that divides the ice in half. If you send that puck all the way down past the opposite end red line, their goal line, uh, that's what's called icing. Yeah and then the play will come all the way back for a face-off in the other zone. So yeah. hopefully we've explained that. If we haven't, we'll give it another try. Mm. As the Admirals win a face-off on the nice new freshly groomed ice, Marco looking to get onto it, and Forgs and Dalmatau on the forecheck. Alice getting pestered, shot towards the front of the net. It's tipped aside. Chalice up to Ellis. Ellis puts it in the middle to Henderson. Henderson as the Admirals. Nice breakout here as Hayward Jones steps up past his man. He shoots and scores. And it's in the net. Deflection off carry and in. 3 0 Admirals. Quick strike action in this second period opening frame. Admirals waste no time in putting up some more goals on the board in the second period. As With Hayward Jones shows a flash of brilliance there as he did a nice move in around the Mako defender and came in, one on the goalie, shot. Goalie got it, literally, but it had enough oomph or enough strength on it to get past and into the goal. Just squeezed in. How good is Nash uh, <clears throat> every year getting better and better? Absolutely. And same, like that, that family is very talented. And it's, again, on display here this evening as you get to watch alongside us in this commentary booth. And the Mako straight back onto the pressure of the uh, Admirals here, demonstrating that fight that they've got because this team, they just don't give up. They do have a lot of heart and a lot of um, drive to succeed. That was the key to Mako's success in uh, previous games, uh, especially the one I saw on Sunday. They, they're relentless. They, they keep at it uh, and Good things happen. Um, As we have a puck shot, it was kind of like a deflect, uh, not a deflection, a um, dump in into the zone. And Chaba holds on to that as the Admiral defense tries to stop the Mako from attacking and swarming as they are now known to do. Yeah, just to add to that icing conversation, say you have the other team pressuring you, you're just stuck in your deep zone and you want to get out, but you can't. So you you can't just shoot the puck out into the other end. That's icing then. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's kind of what it's, if you do send it all the way down, it's a high, mm. uh, you're under a lot of pressure. You want to relieve that pressure by yeah. icing or sending the puck away from all that attacking pressure that you're receiving. Teams often do that, and they get a, a face-off and reset. But the game is so fast, it changes very, very instantaneously. As Ben yeah. Taylor takes a hit on the boards from Gareth McLeish, which is no slouch. He's a very solid man. The beard, as he's known. Nice cross-ice pass here as Sestroni has some open ice. He stops up, looks for a centering feed, decides to backhand it down behind the net. That's Moses with it now. He puts it up to Flynn Hayward-Jones out of his reach and down all the way. That will not be an icing because it, it was sent down from the Admirals into their own zone. Plus Only the goalie the left the crease to play the puck. That's true. Negates the icing. Mm. It's good that we have this little educational session here, Marku. Mm. As Where you see a lot of icing plays that are not called is it during uh, a penalty kill when an icing is allowed. 
That's true. As Daigle took a shot on net, and that just whistles wide. And this doesn't become an icing as the Admiral player touches it before it hits that red line. And Hayward Jones has it, gains the red line, sends it off the glass, and Regan has it. There is an offside call. The linesmen have the hands up. They put them down. That means the Admirals can then counterattack going into that area. Not risking going behind the goal, but Sarikov does, chases it, forcing the player with the puck out from behind the goal. And that's Alex Regan skating well with that. Regan Goes around it two off. defenders, make it three, shot off the crossbar. And a shot, ooh, and that narrowly missed as well. Regan coast to coast from behind the net and getting a scoring opportunity. He was a standout player on Sunday, and he's back at that. Yes, Henderson had the puck down by himself a little bit and elected for some support. He sends it in front, shot back in, and another save. Doesn't get through the net. It was deflected and blocked as Admirals. That's Mason Kennedy with it. Stick handling with it. Gives it up the wall to Ellis. Ellis, cross ice pass to Taylor Kennedy. Taylor Kennedy skates over the red line, dumps the puck in. Kemp with it. Chases it, chips it up off the boards to himself. Trying to get to Elmatau, but that was behind him. Icing, is, oh, it is called, as the linesmen normally put their hands up to indicate that it is a delayed icing. On that occasion, it was happening so fast, they just called it straight away. So that face-off will now come down to the Auckland Mako zone. Chalice lines up, take another face off. He does not lose many, and on this occasion, he does. CJ Kemp with it. Backhand pass up the middle, up to Dalmatau. Very good breakout here by the, um, the Mako. But that puck takes a deflection and into the Mako bench. And we will have a stop and a face off just in front of the Auckland Mako bench at the uh, face off circle, circle dot. Yeah. We're getting some love in the chat for Tomasz Lade, who played for the Admirals a couple years back. Big guy, he big was a fellow unit, in eh? yeah. and Shout out to Thomas if you were ever listening or watching. Mm. It was great to have you here in this uh, beautiful country. He was from Hungary, eh? Is that right? Yeah, I seem to remember. Unless I'm wrong. I'll have to go on my memory on this one. Truly an international sport that is ice hockey. As Simon takes a, absorbs a check from Chalice, who has the puck now and has a three on one. Has it looking for a pass, doesn't pass in. Ooh, the pass gets stopped by the paddle or the goalie stick of Carey. And Carey covers that puck and we have another stop and a face off coverage, yeah. face off coming in the Mako zone. Oh, shot, and it's blocked in front as players battling for it. And the Mako come away with it. That's um, Challoner, and sends it directly into his own bench. And that will get a new puck for another face-off. Challoner hails from the Sky City Stampede. He's only 18 and is uh, named to the U18 New Zealand squads in three years in a row now. So a New Zealand representative out on the ice at the moment. Another youthful star for this country. And now the Mako breaking out of the zone. Ben Taylor does well to avoid the check of Rooney. And Risky Jones has it. That it's taken away. Rooney sends it up the ball past uh, the stick of Andy Hay. As players looking to get the puck, there's a little bit of uh, what we'd say water skiing with the stick. Some people holding on to the other person's body and not moving their feet. Getting a free ride. That's the not allowed. allowing it. Not allowed, but uh, the referee's letting the game play. There is only one head referee. That's a referee with the red armband. 
The other two striped refs are the linesmen, and they handle the icings and the offsides, whereas the referee in the red stripes on the armbands, they call all the penalties, anything that is an infraction against the rules. I guess what they do see, if they don't see it, they don't call it. Yeah. That's their old excuse. And there we go, there's a whistle with an offside. As, I'm sorry, I don't even know. I'm not gonna say the person's name, but I'm just gonna keep calling them Eagle Eyes McGee <laughs> until I find out who their name, what their name is. I think it's Dougie Thompson, good friend. Very neutral, good on the offsides. <laughs> Way to go, yeah. Dougie. It's a hard, hard job being a zebra. It's a thankless job. You're yeah. At least they get let out of the zoo every once in a while, usually on the weekends. Taylor Kennedy takes a massive hit in behind the net as we have a huge collision behind there as uh, Alex Tom Cody, Cody nails him. checks Tyler Kennedy. Damatel stopping up, looking for a pass, sends it up to Simon. Simon one times the pass. It's sent away by Chaba. Son Cody on the four check, takes a hit from Mason. Andy Hart with it now, skating out the middle. Passes to his winger, Sestroni. Sestroni with the three on two, drop pass. Nicely taken away by Luke Tappan. Sends it up to Forbes. And Jack Flight chases it, number 50. Takes a slight bump, puts it in front. Chaba stops that pass shot and covers it up for another faceoff. And some lady named Claire Wanamaker, I don't know, I think I might know her slightly. Some kind of person that I, I uh, spent a lot of time oh, with. I've got a ring on my finger family. for that. Yeah, family. Asking, what rink is the Macos home? Well, they are based out of Auckland, but they don't really have a home. They don't. Maybe if somebody out there that has um, some contacts or some quite deep pockets that would like to initiate a new rink somewhere in Auckland, that would be wonderful. Because yeah. they could have a home. Yeah, with your name on it. Sharks don't have a home nest. Yeah, the deal with the Marco is that it's essentially a U23 team. If I'm not completely mistaken, that's that's the main idea to be a uh, development squad. Exactly right, and they've got a sprinkling of veteran players as we have a big collision behind the net as McLeish has the puck at the point and Hayward Jones with a shot that's steered Blocked in front by someone. Hits a body. Tried to have a one-time shot there was Quigley. Again, blocked. As Fontaine had enough, then dumps it in, goes for a change. That was a big shift. Henderson in behind all of the Mako players. One on four, looking for support. So he just dumps that in and waits for his teammates to give him a hand. Regan passes behind the net to Kemp. Kemp takes a hit from Ellis. Regan with it now. Swarmed by two admirals. Does well to get it up the boards. That's to Ben Taylor. Ben Taylor looking to go wide, but is kind of uh, squashed on the boards by Hayward Jones. Hayward Jones up to Ellis. Ellis, a two-on-one break here. He shoots. Oh, just over the net and hits the glass as admirals looking to strike quickly on the counterattack. And sometimes the referee, just based on, they are on the ice as well, does get the puck shot off them from time to time, as we've just witnessed. Beautiful up the ice pass and a receive from Fraser Ellis. Yeah, showing that quick she speed, nice um, hands as well to receive the pass at speed. And then, um, unfortunately, got his shot up over the net a little bit too high. But they're not done there. They are whew, swarming the goal a little bit. And Mr. Carey, that's Timothy, who does have a brother that plays, I believe, who um, I think he's overseas somewhere at the moment. I'm not entirely sure where. I'll have to double check that one as well. Yes, is, is that Jacob Carey? That's correct. Jacob yeah. is uh, what a, a very good talent produced here in New Zealand. Uh, honing his talents now, or developing them, I should say, overseas. 
which is a great place to do so. Yeah. Can't wait for New Zealand to have its own Nathan Walker. Uh, Absolutely. It, it is hard to develop uh, as a junior player here in New Zealand, so in some case, of the players yeah. go overseas and train in a, in a, in a uh, hockey culture that allows them more ice time. Yes, as we have a deflection and the puck hits the netting, we have a stoppage. You're exactly correct. Nathan Walker, and funny fact here, uh, 2011, while I was playing with the Ice Blacks, we played against Australia in Australia, and Nathan Walker was one of those players, and he was the, one of the youngest representatives for Australia at that time. And that was his kind of initial steps to his emergence, uh, getting kind of a world spotlight put on him because he demonstrated some amazing talent. Um, and he, from there, went on to go to, the, to go to the States, get picked up, and eventually found his way into the NHL, which is yeah. unprecedented for any Australian player, the first to do so. Totally unprecedented. I, I listened to a um, long interview, and he, he did go to the Czech Republic initially oh, to right. play there for several years before going to the U.S. Okay, that's great. They're very good. So, yeah, so he definitely had that overseas experience that we're referring to. It's this international game, eh? Like mm -hmm. going to Czech Republic. I think they're called Czechia now. Czechia, They're yeah. playing under yeah, Czechia's that's right. uh, name. So it is possible, folks. Get your kids involved in yeah. this beautiful sport. If they ever want to make it, that's the top level that is, that uh, is. regarded. It, not just the world in the world would be the National Hockey League. Um, some others argue that it could be the double IHF playing in the KHL. Oh, has a great shot and saved by Chuba. As the Mako put a nice shot on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the right thing to do, but have to admit, would you have gone overseas when you were 14, 15 by yourself to a country that doesn't speak English mostly? Ah, uh, that's a, it's a tough call to make. That's a brave move, and that, that's something with if you are that committed and, and yeah. it's something that you love and enjoy, like a lot of these players and individuals do. I know that both you and I are huge fans and admiral, uh, like lovers of the game. And that, oh, that's a deflection oh. and goal. Oh, strange deflection. And Hayward Jones has a seeing eye shot that manages to go through the five hole. That's between the goalie's legs. And that puck just gets in the net. It's a 4 nothing hockey game here, Marky. Just the perfect deflection to go between the legs. Five hole. Bit of an unfortunate bounce as... The Mako have been playing really well here and having that redirection off someone's skate, I believe, right in the net. That's a that's a hard one to swallow if you're the Mako here in the second period. 8.50 to play, down by four. Oh, and Emerald's straight back not, at it. Emerald's not letting up the pressure with Daigle taking another shot at net. So let's hope the uh, Oakland Mako can regroup here and um, string themselves back together a little bit and and move on, next shift, just just move forward really. Kind of erase what's happened. Ideally getting themselves a goal to get back in this hockey game. But they're in their own zone at the moment and they gotta go almost 200 feet the other way to score. I'm not entirely sure what that is in meters. Roughly 100 meters maybe. Either way, play continues. That's Flynn Hayward-Jones on the forecheck, stepping up from his defensive position, but well met by Risky Jones. Daigle circling back in his own zone, has the puck, sends it up to Chalice. Chalice to Ellis, Ellis skating well, one on two, gives it to Henderson, Henderson over to Chalice. Curls back up the wall, has it at the line, the blue line. Looking for his, for a receiver. Has it taken away by Snowd. Ben Taylor. Oh, has it for a moment. Gives it to Snowd. Lumbering through the line. Henderson passes it up to Chalice. Chalice tries the old dipsy doodle move with a uh, try to go between the legs. Over to Taylor Kennedy. Kennedy has his dump in blocked. Snowd up off the wall to Bull. Four checking hard. Ellis with it now. Cross ice receives that pass. 
Andy Hay stops Ellis's progress. Oh, it's in front of the net shot, and a great save by Carey as Taylor Kennedy stepped in front of the slot and took a great shot, stopped by the chest protector of Carey. Back in front here, the puck is in the middle, but Apps gets it and skates it out of harm's way. Gains the blue line. Has a pass, but it's deflected away. Intended target was Bull. Dale Harrop showing some nice stick handling, but gave the puck away as he chases the dumpin on Kemp. Kemp does well to spin away from the check. Kemp over to Regan. Regan back to Kemp. Kemp looking up ice. Nice forward pass to Apps as he falls. Still has it, though. It's right back up. Sends it to Chamberlain. That's Sebastian Chamberlain. Sorry, no, Caleb. My apologies. Dalmatau with it. Gains the line. Takes a wrist shot. And Chaba sees that, puts the glove out, and saves it and holds on. How great are the uh, new Admirals jerseys? I love that dark navy combined with those um, navy stripes, uh, bright yellows. Simple, effective. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Like, what do you think of those Admirals jerseys? Maybe have a look at the ones they used to have in the past. They were like more of a baby blue color mm -hmm. with a different, um, some stars on the front. Yes, I agree. They do look sharp. I like simple. Simple is good. And you can now own uh, your own. Uh, go to the uh, go to the Auckland Ice Hockey Association web store and order in your own. You can even customize it, I think. Some people are getting their own names on it. Yeah. They look quite sharp. Personalize it. Get your own number. A lot of people in the stands currently um, in attendance are wearing various ice hockey jerseys, showing their support of their favorite team, their favorite player. Yeah, Always I can nice spot an Ice Blacks jersey down there. Yeah, shout out to Braden Lee. See your jersey out there. That's great. Ice Blacks being, being the uh, name for the New Zealand national team. And we've got a whistle. Looks like it is either an icing or an offside. It looks like it's an icing. We are going to go to the other end of the ice as the main referee calls that. Just so you know, the main referee with the red armbands, he can overrule the linesman because he is the head referee. And if he sees something that he needs to call or she needs to call, then they are able to do so. As we have two players crash to the ice there as the faceoff is controlled by the Mako. Oh, that puck gets centered in front of the goal and McLeish sends it away. And Sestroni passes it to Moses. Moses gives it back to Sestroni. No, he misses that one. And Luke Tappen backhands it up to Flight. Flight up the wall to Ben Taylor, Ben Taylor, good stick handle to the middle. Fontaine with it now, in the slot, shot! Great save by Chaba, up to the test. That was a brilliant shot that was taken there in the middle of the ice. And Chaba, great. up to the task. Yes, great, great play from Mako. Uh, one of the best op opportunities so far. Prime real estate for scoring. Yeah, when we say the slot area, that kind of means the in between the two offensive circles. Directly in front of the goal, really. High scoring chance area. So we've reached the 4-10 minute mark as Andy Hay takes a nice wrist shot on goal and Chaba sees it all the way, gloves that down. As Andy was probably looking for someone to be in front of the goal to screen or offer a, uh, a taking away of the goalie's eyes. Mm. And if you do that, yeah. then you might have a chance of getting that puck in the goal. But you could see from Hay's reaction he didn't like the, his shot either. He was saying some nice things up to the rafters. So Admirals with 21 shots on goal. The Mako looking to get another one here, and they only have 10. So they're just lagging behind not only on the score sheet, but also on the shot amount. As the Admirals faithful here are ramping up their support. 
I guess with the Alcamaco having so many different uh, players from all over the country, it's hard to have their family or their supporters all travel with them. Mm -hmm. We wonder what their chant that's would right. be as well. How, what do you, what's a chant for a Mako? Ah, like? oh, that's a good question. I guess with the any new things, they gotta get something, yeah. Something <laughs> for them. And Auckland is called the city of sales, as New Zealand is, like Auckland itself is on an isthmus, and it's uh, very much so surrounded by water. As, oh, we have a shot and save by D oh, Diggle with a shot and saved, and then a rebound save by um, Carey off Henderson. These Admirals quickly on the counterattack. Chalice with it. This is their number one line for the Admirals. Possibly showing the inexperience of Namako. Kennedy over to Ellis. Wrist shot. Saved by Timothy Carey. Regan skating away with it now. Three on two the other way. Skates to the middle, looking for his options. Takes a shot. Misses the goal. Kept in at the line nicely. As the physical play takes a step up, as App sends his man down. It's Kemp from the line. Shot. Deflected in front. Stopped. Doesn't get in towards the goal. Chalice with it. Nice, fat, nice pass with um, the saucer pass, but doesn't get where he wanted it to go. Ellis with it. Backpedaling. Mason Kennedy. Sends a high, hard pass, deflected by Chalice, negating the icing. Forgs gets hit. Has it taken away by Ellis. Ellis in front to Chamberlain. That's Caleb. But it's his sticks lifted and taken away as the Mako quickly regroup on a two-on-two. -two. Delmatel, wrist shot, save by Chaba. Even a rebound save. Chaba having to be sharp on that one. That's Simon off the wall. Avoiding the forecheck of Rooney, down Mattel. Looking to possibly get a change. As uh, tapping with it. Gives it over to down Mattel, down Mattel with it. Chips it in. Puck deflected up. Tapping and Harrop go together to try and get it. Rooney for checking hard. And the Mako set up with it behind the goal. Up to Fontaine, a nice stretch pass. Uncontrolled, though, by Fontaine. McLeish gives it to Rooney. Rooney looking up ice. Gives it to, no, Moses doesn't get it. This could be an icing call. And it is. And we will head back down to the Admiral zone for a face-off. Looking at 36.3 seconds remaining in this second period action. Score is 4-0 to the Admirals. The Mako Shark, also a local um, himself. himself. I was surfing hot water beach while a Mako Shark was on the next wave. Uh, I decided that was enough surfing for that day. Yeah, that's a good sign to get out of the water <laughs> anytime you see a yeah. shark. It was a juvenile Mako, but those can be only be uh, <laughs> more unpredictable. Oh, yes. Always got to keep yourself safe. Yeah, yeah, surfing's a big thing down here in New Zealand. Yeah, the Mako shark, very fast, can can leap out of the water and saw a video of one landing on top of a fisherman's boat. Wow. Here in the Oakland Harbor. There you go, you never know what you're gonna see. So, that concludes the second period action. That's now 40 minutes in the books and we have a score of 4-0 for the Admirals over the Oakland Mako. Mako looking to regroup, get on the board in the early frame of the last period as we will head into our second intermission. Please don't go away. We will be speaking to Alcon Admiral Captain Justin Dago momentarily.
All right, welcome back to the second inter intermission. We have Justin Daigle here from the West Auckland Admirals, the captain. How are you doing? Good, buddy. Thank you. How are you doing? You. Yeah, good, good. Thanks. So, how do you? How's the game so far? Yeah, good. I mean, uh, as as we expected with the Mako, they they love to push the pace. They got young legs, and uh, and I tell you, the the speed and pace of the game is awesome so far. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how's the Admirals so far been? How how are they now? How do they now compare to previous seasons? Yeah, I think um, you know youth is is one word I would use to describe it. We got a lot of young guys, um, and and they're doing a great job. I mean, uh, pretty pretty amazing to see the amount of talent coming up, uh, not just here in Auckland, but but around the country. We got. Uh, you know, a bright future ahead for a lot of those players. And, uh, and yeah, it's awesome to see. Um, you know, we, as always, you always have a few people that are out the door and a few mm -hmm. new ones coming in. And so uh, we, had, we had a couple guys come back after a few years off, which is awesome. And, uh, and yeah, just, just really impressed with, uh, with the level of play of the young guys so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great what you're doing with uh, young kids in New Zealand, your development program. It's great to see. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just several Mako players uh, on the Admirals. So, how's it been? They go and get that ice time, and they come back. Have you seen them, uh, that give them some growth and development? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they, it's it's invaluable experience. I mean, to be able to get uh, you know ice time and, and contribute and and uh, and play at this level, obviously. Uh, is going to benefit them, and and I tell you what, they're they're often the guys that are working the hardest at training, and um, you see it. I mean, they're they're so committed to their development. They work hard on and off the ice, and uh, yeah, for for them to be able to uh, to to get some ice time and, and contribute is uh, it's going to serve them well in the long run of their development. So all right, cool. Yeah. Um, so you have one of the most stylish stashes in Auckland. <laughs> have you ever considered sh sh shaving? I, uh, you know, it's been years now. I, yeah. I think it's kind of a bit of a staple. Every once in a while, I'll get rid of this greasy chin hair that I got going right. on. Um, but, but the mustache is pretty much there for good. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone would recognize me if I shaved it. I'd look like a like a 12 year old I boy. I can imagine. So. Well, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're we're gonna do a flash round. So three quick questions: uh, Colorado Avalanche or Tampa Bay Lightning? Colorado. Uh, Blues or Crusaders? Blues. Admirals or Stampede? Admirals. All right. Yeah, baby. Thanks, mate. Hey, awesome. Thanks, Marku. Thanks. Cheers, buddy.
Paul Marie Fano, Kia ora, Ian Tokuinua. Welcome back to the third period action of the NZIHL ice hockey down here in Auckland, Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's a beautiful game. Um, I'm Ian Wanamaker, alongside me is Marku. Welcome again, and this is third period. We've got the Auckland Admirals taking on the Auckland Mako, and it's 4 0 to the Admirals. So we're looking yep. forward to the next part of this game and seeing if the Mako can get on the score, the score sheet here, Marku. And the Admirals have ha taken a commanding lead. Um, the Mako have only managed 11 shots, so I think the message in the dressing room might, might have been leave it all out there in the third. Yeah, I guess any time you're out on this ice, it's a, it's a beautiful time and it's worth celebrating. And they are going to get the experience they're looking for when they're playing against this quality or more quality opposition. And so it's really encourageable for anyone that's watching this that there is a pathway and opportunity for you to increase your skills by playing against better people. So, like, you know, like I'm going to ask you in a minute about the NHL and the Stanley Cup Finals and who your picks are. But one of the quotes, I think it was from Gabriel Landeskog, captain of the Colorado Avalanche, saying, well, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that, that's it. That's it. <coughs> and Mako have a could experience that they they beat stampede last season so they have seen some of that success and now this this young team gets to play against the best and the admirals are a formidable opponent as arguably they could have been or if not were um, a finalist even though that wasn't quite decided between the botany swarm and the west auckland admirals they didn't have that chance to do the I guess you would call it a semi-final because it was the second place team against the third place team. Mm. And the first place team, because there's only a five team competition, automatically got entry into the final. So they, well, they didn't even get a chance to get that opportunity to play the final against the Sky City Stampede, who are, I guess, officially or unofficially yeah. the current or reigning champions. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm sure the Admirals will be looking to challenge that this season with the squad they have and uh, Stampede suffering a couple of losses in their roster. Uh, Some notable losses as well. Yeah. Schneider taking a leave of absence for a year. And I'm not sure if McCray's back either, but we can double check that. They've lost a couple of key pieces down there. Anyway, Taylor Kennedy with a shot deflected off a skate, doesn't reach the target. As um, Henderson had a shot earlier and that also went wide. There's been a couple of shots on net or towards the net that haven't actually reached the, the goal. As San Cody, number 10, skating well here, stops up, drops past, shot. That hits off the mask of Chaba Kirskos Mangos. Um, Chaba sh shakes it off. Always a bit worrying for a goaltender when they take a puck off the, of the face mask, uh, making sure that they're okay. But he's shaking it off. As Luke Simon has the puck, passes it over to Luke Tappen. And Taylor gets the puck. He shoots it. Nice shot, and what a save off the blocker. And that was redirected up into the netting, and we will have another stoppage of play as uh, Timothy Carey shakes off the blocker. So that Mr. Tappen, um, Mr. Tappen, that's who I call um, Luke's dad, actually, by the way, who's the current Ice Black manager, yeah. a fantastic human being. Brother to Thomas Tappen, who I just met uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, they hail from Christchurch, isn't yes, that right? Yes, that's correct, yes. Um, and he's Luke's playing currently for the Red Devils down in Canterbury, mm -hmm. and he's been named to the under-18 New Zealand squad in 2020 and 2021, hoping to continue that and... As he, oh, actually, he might be overage. He's 18 years of age right now. So he'll be looking to get an ice black position or an under 20 position in the future. As Andrew Hay steps in from his blue line spot, keeping the puck in for the Mako. And Ben Taylor jostling with Taylor Kennedy. And Mason steps in and gets that puck. Doesn't get outside the line yet, though, as. Kang takes a shot. Oh, and the rebound comes in front of the net. 
And that's deflected away as Mason gets hit hard down by Risky Jones. Physicality amping up, which is great to see as Andy Hay with the puck. Has a wrist shot from the point. Misses the goal. Admirals clear the zone. Harrop with a two-on-one shaping up here. Does he shoot or pass? He shoots, and that is saved by Tim Carey. Kang up the wing. Sends a cross-ice pass, but there's nobody there. Now, Apps. Stick handling, one-on-one -on -one against McLeish. Tries to break through McLeish, but doesn't quite do so. Sestroni on the boards. Backhands it to the middle. Kemp has the puck in the middle of the ice by his own blue line. Wearing that distinctive um, stampede blue helmet with the yellow stickers on it. Got to admit, the Stampede uniform is another one of those great, sharp-looking uniforms. Nice and simple, but very menacing and, and mean. Yeah, but as a Finnish national, I'm not loving the color scheme that much. Brings to mind, like, a neighboring country. Ah, this uh, is true. <laughs> That's fair enough. Well, arguably, the Admiral's it's colors very, very similar the to the Swedish uh, Tre Kroner <laughs> national jersey. As that puck is in front of the net, and they are battling for it, but they can't get it through. Dago with a one-time shot. Just missed the net. Oh, and we have a nice hit there by Apps, sending his man down. Oh, I hear you. I hear you, Marku. It's uh, especially if you are of Finnish origin and you have a next door neighbor that is also a very successful ice hockey playing nation in Trey Connor, the Swedes. Mm. Yes, it's a it's a sweet rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Um, with myself, I originally hail from. Canada, Mississauga, Ontario, and uh, our neighbors to the south are the Americans. And they definitely have a quite a healthy rivalry with the Canucks um, on the national stage or world stage as well. But I believe your Finns are ranked number one in the world right now. If ranked, not, if that's right. Correct. Come a long way since the 90s. Uh, climbing the stands and uh, it's pretty great to see them uh, succeeding in the way they are now. It's great coaching, great team play and uh, just relentless never giving up hockey. That's fantastic. Um, you must be very proud and uh, big congratulations to the, the Finns. Yeah. It's good times. Can't believe it. Love the country of Finland. Spent a bit of time there with the Ice Blacks at uh, Vidamaki at the Olympic Training Village. Fantastic facility. Learn a little bit on um, some floorball. I'm not sure what you call it, but it's a great sport. That's right. Bandi? Uh, floor, it, floor, it, it, it is floorball. Floorball. As the players lost his stick here, as uh, the Mako are looking at putting up their first goal, but now they're breaking away the other way, the Admirals, in a three on one. But that is well defended by the Mako, and Kang sends the puck up the boards. All the way down to Justin Daigle, who gives it to Flynn Hayward Jones. Back to Daigle. Oh, actually, no, that goes back to Chubb, the goaltender, getting him on the action. As Daigle sends a long pass, intercepted by Kang. Kang gives it to Flight. That's Jack. Looking to make some nice, nifty toe drag moves. But he goes away from the play and regroups in. That's Fontaine. Hard on the forecheck, gets the puck. Trying to get away from the stick by stick handling. And Daigle, saucer pass up the middle, gets towards Henderson, and he's onside, backhand, forehand, and it is a save by Carey. A sweet move by Henderson as he grimaces, thinking he could have done a bit better on that one. What a move, what a save. Great save. And what a, another long pass by Daigle just up the ice, and that one was a bit... Uh, lucky with the bounces, but yeah, you earned those bounces. That is true, and um, that's great on ice vision. And when someone says they have high hockey IQ and they see the ice well, that's what Daigle was doing there. As Kennedy has a shot, and it is rebounded very quick for Nick Henderson, capitalizing on a juicy rebound, and he scores, making it a 5 nothing hockey game. Couldn't capitalize on the breakaway. Carey with the great save, but there he goes. Knocks it right off when it lands. 
on the ice. Takes the Admirals 5-0 ahead. So that is Tahirua Torufa Rima. That's a Rima spot up on the board now for the Admirals. That's being a five. And Mako on none. So hopefully Mako can reply here and uh, get on that scoreboard as well. But the Admirals pressuring hard again with a one-time shot by Chalice with a great pass centering feed from Ellis as this line does very well for this Admirals squad. Henderson sends a nice cross ice feed to Ellis. Ellis stops up, sends it down low. And Regan over to his defensive partner, Kemp. Kemp up the wall, stopped by Chamberlain. I think that is Caleb. And passes it in the corner. And that's to Chalice. Chalice to the point man, Kennedy. Over to his brother, Taylor. Taylor sends it in a backhand down to Taylor Rooney. A couple of Taylors. I think it's spelled differently, though. And Chalice gets the puck, shoots. Saved by Carey and the rebounds there, but it is also covered up with another save from Timothy Carey, who you can't knock right now. He's playing pretty well, stopping a lot of shots put on him by the Admirals. Yep, he's giving the Marco some chances of winning here. The score could be uglier without Carey making those big saves. Uh, nice deflection here as we've got Tappen stepping up on the play. Using his large frame and skating very well. McLeish passes up to the backhand of Caleb. Chamberlain and Tappen gets it now. Sends the pass over to Epps. Epps has a one on four. Passes to the middle, that's Hayden Bull. Backhand looking to give it to the middle person. That is Luke's node. Sorry, Zach Snowd, my apologies. Got to get your names correct, guys. We are just learning a lot of these names, folks, and please bear with us. If we do make any mistakes, we do apologize. We're trying our best. We are amateurs. Um, as you probably even heard some of my, I don't know, poor attempts at Tareo. I'm trying. Uh, there'll be a little bit of Reo mixed in with um, the English. I don't know, maybe you can give us some finish as well. We're an international broadcast. But Māori, Te Reo Māori is um, an official, it is the official language of New Zealand, just like English and uh, sign. Yeah, who knows? I might uh, surprise with a line that no one understands. Well, there could be some Finnish viewers out there. Yeah. Well, I don't know what time it is in Finland currently. Ah, it's early morning. So you never know if they want to get their fix of ice hockey, uh, tune into our live broadcast. As we enter into the, oh, just close to the second half of this 20 minute period, we're on 11 minutes 40. And we have the Auckland Admirals hailing from West Auckland. They have a five spot up against this Auckland Marco under 23 development team. So these games, they are not officially recognized in the standings, but certainly there are bragging rights on the line that both teams are playing for. Do you think that will change in the coming years where they might be added to the standings? I would uh, love to see that, Marco. And in fact, that would be an amazing development. Not only that, we'd love to see a, another team enter in the league, maybe perhaps in Wellington. That uh, would be great. Um, they would need a, a full-size strength to do so. I, that's I true. Imagine. That is true. But there are some exciting developments happening in this country with um, Kerry Goulet's three ice program that um, he is bringing down to New Zealand and into Australia as well. So if you haven't heard about this, it's basically a lot of current, well, not current, but a lot of ex-NHL players, uh, AHL, ECHL, some of the top three leagues players are competing in a three-on-three -three event. I think it's eight-minute halves only, and there's 16-minute games. Very quick, very exciting, high skill. So there's dates. Um, if you have, if you want to have a look at that, Mr. Kerry Goulet, he's on all the social media platforms. We'll tell you all about it. All right, we'll be here in Auckland. There will be something in Wellington as well as Queenstown. 
And I believe Dunedin. Oh, as we have a nice shot from the side angles. Jack Flight takes what's called a sharp angle shot. And I believe the net was off of its pegs. Hence why we have a uh, whistle from the referee and a stop. There's a lot, lot of action there with Mako players rolling around the ice, giving everything they have to put the puck on the net. The ref's having a little chat with the Admiral's bench here. Maybe giving them a warning about something. Well, it looks like we have a goaltender change. That's what's happening here. Is Chaba Griskos right. Mangos is making a change here with um, the new incoming goaltender for the Admirals. And we get young Jaden Pert in net. So a big, um, big shout out to Jaden getting a start in, in um, this competition here this evening. As he faces a shot straight away with a nice blocker save, getting a good reception from the West Auckland crowd here. As we have an offside. We have a question on the live chat from um, Kijat or Kajet. Uh, there are fights in the crowd like a real NHL event. Uh, well, I guess uh, depending on how rowdy some of the fans get, <laughs> this has definitely been a raucous atmosphere um, in the past. Tonight could not be uh, an exception. People act and behave in many different strange ways when they come yeah. to an ice hockey game, with or without any um, beverages in their systems. But yeah, it's very I, possible. I, I have seen it. I've witnessed it. I've seen a fan fight. Well, actually, fighting a player, a player who was I ejected from the I rink. I remember that. Yeah. And a fan started fighting the player after he left the ice rink. I could not believe my eyes. And that's why we love watching. We don't know what's going to happen in these games. You get surprised, even if you've been involved for years and years. Yeah, we had AJ Spiller escort the super fan out of the rink. Super fan is to say the least. That is for sure. There are a lot of great fans here in this country. Um, now we just ticked into 9 minutes 30 in the um, third period of play. So we're getting into the last portion of our game as Apps sends the puck off the boards, hitting the back of Andrew Hay. Kept in at the line by Tyon. As Ellis bodies his man, as uh, Apps has his stick knocked away from his hands from one of the Kennedy brothers. Sometimes in this score line, you tend to see a little bit more physicality as players um, want to make their mark, letting the others know that they're not going to take any liberties or um, even though the score line's a little bit high, that that sometimes can happen. Yeah. It, there's several ways to contribute to your, to your team. It's not just scoring. It's not just passing. It's also the physical play. You put up those... Uh, checks and you grind down the other team make them a little bit hesitant a little bit more tired yeah they don't get those liberties they don't get that free ice or that time and space to make a play or move so jordan chalice with the puck now sends it up to nick henderson has his stick lifted by regan and it looks like we've got another eagle eyes mcgee that's mr thompson on the job with a Another offside call. We got to acknowledge the officials. I mean, if you don't have them, we don't have a game. And they do, do do a service. They're probably the only ones that are actually paid to be here. Yep, that's right. And it is a challenging job for them. As we have... After I tried refing myself, I completely stopped yelling at the refs. <laughs> That's fair enough. There you go. Well, I mean, it's great that people actually do referee. And if you ever um, are one of those people that have, in the past, abused an official or um, voiced your opinion to them. That's right. Give it a go. Give yourself a chance to experience what they've experienced. You might have a different perspective on how you see the game. Nevertheless, we carry on here. Ooh, this, speaking of which, the official has seen something that was naughty. No, no, we don't do that, he says. And hand on top of the wrist, 
meaning that is a holding indication. And that is two minutes, two minutes dans la boîte de penalty. So that's a penalty box infraction. And Dale Harrop will sit two minutes or less for breaking the rules. No, no, you don't do that. Dale Harrop, two minutes, Coxie Minutia in the penalty box. We got some Rua minutes on the penalty box. Oh, and it's chipped down the ice by Sistroni for the penalty killing unit of the Admirals. And uh, he gets the puck back with a weird bounce towards him. As the Mako looking to control the puck as Flight sends it down. And that is number 55 for the Mako. Doesn't have a nameplate on the back of his jersey. That's Aranjus, and that's Luca. As we've got Fontaine skating well. Tries to go through the whole Admirals, doesn't. That's tapping in the middle, takes a nice wrist shot. Oh, just over his goal, over the goal. There's a solid check there too by Taylor Kennedy. Rimming the puck around the glass. That's when the puck goes all the way along the glass and then down the ice without touching the ice surface. And now we have Fontaine back with it. Sends it up to Andrew Hay. Andy Hay on the back end. Puts it behind the net. Flight in chase. Misses that entirely. Kang doesn't get it at the line and uh, Admirals dump the puck down the ice once again. Oh, as Timothy Carey comes out of the net to play the puck. A little bit dangerous. We always try to tell the goaltenders, stay in the net, stop the puck. If you're the goaltender, tend the goal. You're out of the net, that puck can go in it. So there he goes, <laughs> just simple stuff. Not always that simple though in the eyes of a goaltender. Probably the hardest position to play, especially mentally. They're on the longest. Arguably yeah. the hardest job in the game. Who would want to stop a 100 mile an hour puck coming at you? I wouldn't. Yeah, you think it's uh, uh, hard when you're facing 40 shots a game, but it's actually hard if you face a little shots and you have to stay mentally prepared and uh, alert the whole time. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to get cold or not in a game. And at the moment, the Admirals have put on 32 shots onto the Mako goal and, and got five goals out of those shots. And the Mako have only registered with 15. I hope that's an incorrect stat, but 15 shots in a, in a game is not going to generate enough offense for you to score. No. But it is a learning experience, you know, as we mentioned. So hopefully that they, they will chalk that up to experience and try to get a few more shots in their next game because they are playing again tomorrow against the Botany Swarm. Yeah, and we'll be back for that broadcast from East Auckland. As we got a Let's Go Admirals chant going by one fan. And uh, it doesn't seem to be very well received. Anyway, we carry on playing and, oh, we have an offside as Daigle. Admirals have a great bunch of fans here in Auckland. These games get really loud, especially when we have those uh, local uh, rivalries against the Swarm or when the stampede come up and absolutely. So we've got four minutes left with this third period as time is ticking down. And we do thank you for tuning into our live stream broadcast. As Bull takes a nice hard shot on the net, saved by Jaden Pert. Daigle, nice sauce pass. Out of the reach of Caleb Chamberlain as Alex Regan brings it in the middle. Skates well. Passes over to Bull. Bull has his pass deflected off the shin pads of Dale Harrop. And the puck goes into the neutral ice area. And Brad Bradley Apps makes a couple of nice stick handling moves at the blue line, but goes all the way back into his own zone. Looking up ice for a pass and doesn't connect. And that's Flynn Hayward-Jones over to Caleb Chamberlain. Caleb 
Tried to get it to Daigle. Daigle has it taken away, but gets it back. Daigle with the puck in front of his goal. Up to Moses. Moses all the way over to Flynn Hayward Jones. Flynn gives it to Kayla, but it's offside. Three minutes to go. Admirals with, the, with that big lead of five goals. The rest of the uh, minutes, we're going to see if uh, the Mako are ab able to put any pressure, uh, if the Admirals are going to let up on their aggressive offense that they've been showing this throughout this whole game. Yeah, we shall see if the Admirals will press on here or are they going to sit on this 5 nothing lead or are they going to try to push the pace a little bit, but often sometimes if you push too hard offensively, you're risking exposing yourself defensively, get a goal against, it breaks the shutout. You want to preserve that as much as you can. Give your goalies um, all the support they need. Well, Luke Simon, he might say otherwise, as he gains entry into the line and the Admirals gets in the zone, passes it up, and the Admirals take it away, Andy Hart. Gets a little bit liberal with his stick on to Luke Tappen. Tappen does well to hold on to it. And there is a penalty There's here. A penalty coming, yes. Possibly on Andy Hart with that uh, liberal stick that I mentioned. Let's see what the referee calls. Duminut, and that is for a hook. We have a hooking penalty, and that's uh, going to the man with the upper lip sweater and number 13 on his back. That is Andy Hart. I've had a lot of battles with Andy over the years, and he's a fierce competitor. Plays on that line, that edge of uh, within and without of the rule, outside of the rules. Loves playing. Good player. A lot of heart. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <Well>, Ian. <laughs> Sorry, that was good. Fontaine up to Kang. Kang over to Andy Hay. Andy Hay's shot blocked and sent away by the Admirals. As you really, I really want to see the Mako get a get a goal here. It'd be really good on the power play. Finish this game with at least one goal. Yeah, Fontaine fun. gains entry to the Admiral Zone. Taken away by Nash Hayward Jones, but Fontaine got it, brought it back inside the blue line, but he already had a couple of his Mako teammates inside, and that resulted in an offside. Maybe that's not an offside in Colorado, but it is here. And Kura, Jack, thanks very much for the uh, inside track there with people not being, they're not so fussed on how many shots they get. It is all about development, and that is what we want to see. You want people to get better, and whatever means that is, any improvement is good improvement. Have to agree on Jack on that. But somebody blew a tire inside that blue line and uh, couldn't hold the line, meaning that they couldn't stay on the other side of the blue line before the puck carrier carried the puck in over that line, resulting in that offside. And we have a good shot on net there by number 23. That is Challoner, Tyler. As a young 18-year-old with the yeah. um, Sky City Stampede. And Jaden Pert getting some of his uh, first uh, saves made on the Admirals. And that is into the last minute of play of the third period, which could possibly be the end of this game. We're not sure yet with the Mako still on the power play. They'll finish the game on the power play unless they score. And Regan has the puck. And it's uh, given up. Daigle has it to Flynn Hayward Jones. And Zach Snowd had it at the, no the line. And Daigle has it now. And he takes one on three, he takes a shot, misses the net. Has 10 seconds left in the game. And Ellis has it as he skates back with it. Looking like this contest is going to finish at five goals to zero as Hart steps back out onto the ice and rejoins his team and 
That will do it, folks. With a score of five to your West Oakland Admirals, zero to the Oakland Maco. Thank you very much for joining in and watching this ice hockey action. Stay tuned tomorrow as we'll bring you live YouTube streaming broadcast of the Aklamako taking on the Botany Swarm over in Botany at the Hive. So on behalf of Marku and myself, Ian Wanmaker, thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe out there. Enjoy your weekend and evening. Kakiteano. Thank you.